Welcome to another episode of the Dana Yi Show, and in this episode, we're going to go over a really annoying restriction that's placed on traders and investors with smaller accounts, otherwise known as the PDT or Pattern Day Trader Rule. And I'll also cover how you can avoid this restriction, in legal ways, of course. As always, I'm not a financial advisor, so anything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only. A little bit of personal history, the way that I actually learned about this rule slash restriction is that I broke it. This was when I was really new to investing in trade but it was definitely a interesting learning experience. Okay, so now on to what the PDT rule slash restriction actually is. As I mentioned earlier, PDT stands for pattern day trader, and a pattern day trader is someone who executes four or more day trades within five business days using the same account. There are several important points here, and hopefully I'll remember to touch on them later in the video, but the definition itself isn't the annoying part. The annoying part is that if you fall under this guideline, you are subject to additional regulatory scrutiny and limitations. Namely, the limitation is that if you have less than $25,000 in your account, you will be prohibited from making any further day trades until the balance is over that amount. And also note that this only applies to margin accounts, so cash accounts aren't subject to the PDT rule. All right, that sounds annoying, but what actually is a day trade? As the name kind of suggests, right? What do you think day trading? You think trading on the same day, so that's kind of what it is. So day trading refers to buying and selling, essentially opening and closing a position on the same security on the same day. One thing to note, and one thing I'll cover in the examples in a second, is that just purchasing a security without selling it later is not a day trade. So if I really felt like it, for the next hour, I could buy one share of a company every single minute, and those don't count as day trades because I'm not selling. Even after that definition, it might not be super clear what actually is classified as a day trade, so I'll go over five examples of what is and is not classified as a day trade. First is the easiest example, if you buy 100 shares of, I guess we're going to use Apple in all these examples, at 9.30 in the morning and sell it on the same day at 12.10 p.m. That is a day trade because you bought and sold on the same day. And note, this is considered one day trade. Example two, you buy 100 shares in the morning and you sell 50 shares on the same day, and even though you still have 50 shares, this is considered a day trade because they think of it as buying and selling those 50 shares on the same day. It doesn't matter that you still have 50 shares afterwards. Example three, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. Let's say you scale into your position, which is buying more to get a bigger size over time. So if you buy 50 shares of Apple in the morning, buy 50 shares a little bit later, and then buy 100 shares a little bit later, and then you sell them all at once, this is considered three day trades. So if you did this, you wouldn't be able to trade at all other otherwise in the five day window or your account might get flagged. And the way to think of this is that even though you're selling it all at once, this is considered buying 50, selling 50, buying 50, selling 50, buying 100, selling 100, even though all the sales are in the same order. Example four, if you buy 100 shares at 10 a.m. on November 22nd and then on November 23rd, so the following day at 12, 10 p.m., then this is not a day trade because November 22nd and November 23rd are treated as separate days in the market. And yeah, so it's a single business day. It's not a 24 hour period. So if you bought at 3 p.m. on November 22nd and sold at 9 a.m. on November 23rd, that would be okay because even though they're within 24 hours, they are on separate trading days. And just an example of shorting where instead of buying and then selling, you sell and then buy. If you sell in the morning and then cover in the afternoon on the same day, that is a day trade. Another thing I want to note is that the three trades over any five day window is a rolling window. So I'll kind of draw what that means in a second. And these are five trading days. So if we write out the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then I guess Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Note that I'm not writing in the weekends because those don't count as days here because the market isn't open. What rolling window means is that in any five day period, so let's say this Monday to Friday, you can take three trades. In this five day period, you can take three trades. And this is different than saying three trades over a week where it would be Monday to Friday. So what does this rolling window thing mean? It means that you cannot make three trades on Friday and then trade again on Monday because if you were inside this window, that would be more than three trades, even though in the week of Monday to Friday, you only made three trades. So it's three day trades over any five day rolling period. So why does this restrictive rule exist and where did it come from? This regulation came into place in February of 2001 under the guise of protecting the investing public. And the reason it came about in this time period, 
February 2001. If you'll recall, this was right after the dot-com bubble where stocks just basically went up every single day. And because people saw, oh my God, stocks only go up. Then a lot of people became full-time day traders. And when the dot-com bubble burst, there was a huge plunge in the overall markets. And a lot of people who didn't really know what they were doing lost a lot of money. So this rule was enacted to protect the public. One question I always ask myself is why is it $25,000? Because by putting a dollar amount on it, the SEC is basically saying, if you have less than this amount of money, we don't think you're responsible enough to handle your own money, which personally I think is kind of silly. And this comment kind of puts it in a funny way, an amount that they arbitrarily, even though it's spelled wrong, arbitrarily believe represents enough risk capital to offset any self-inflicted damage trading might create financially. This is to say that the SEC is like, if you don't have $25,000, mm, we don't want you to trade. We don't want you to lose your money. But why I think this is kind of silly is that there are people with small accounts, $10,000, $20,000 or smaller, and they definitely know what they're doing. They're just building up their accounts slowly over time. And there are also people with $100,000, $200,000 that have no idea what they're doing and they just go recklessly into the market. And in my personal opinion, it shouldn't be the amount of capital that you have that determines how you can trade. But that's beside the point. I can't change the SEC. That was just a mini side tangent. All right, now that we have what the PDT rule is and where it came from out of the way, now I'm going to go over how you can avoid getting restricted. Again, this is not financial advice, so make of this what you want. First and kind of easiest solution is to have more than $25,000. I say easy, not in the sense that $25,000 is easy to make, but easy here just means that the rule applies to people with margin accounts under $25,000. So if you have a margin account over $25,000, the PDT rule just doesn't apply to you. Sort of similar to the first point, it's to take fewer trades because the restriction says that you can't take any more than three day trades in a five day period. So you could take up to three. This personally is a bit restrictive for me. So I'll go over a couple more things of what you could do. Thirdly is to open multiple brokerage accounts. I don't remember if I touched on it earlier in the video, but in an earlier definition, uh, it says that this rule applies on a per account basis. So for example, if you had $10,000 to invest and trade, you can't open a margin account and make as many day trades as you want because you don't have the $25,000 of required equity. However, you could open two $5,000 accounts and take three day trades in any five day period each on those, essentially allowing you six day trades over any five day period. And if you were feeling really ambitious, you could do 10 $1,000 accounts and basically take 30 day trades over any five day period. Fourthly is to use a cash account. And I covered the difference in actually, I think my previous video, but note earlier, I said the PDT rule only applies to margin accounts on a cash account. You can trade as much as you want with settled funds. That's something important to note. There is something called the good faith violation, which I plan on doing as my next video. It's another rule in cash accounts that you could break. But if you have a cash account, you can trade as much as you want, as long as you have the cash in the account. Simple example, if you have, again, the same $10,000 in a cash account and each trade is $100, you could take 100 trades a day if you really wanted to. Whereas if you had a $10,000 margin account, you can only take maximum three day trades in any five day period. Lastly, you can do what's called swing trading because the PDT rule applies to day traders. So buying and selling on the same day. However, day trading is not the only type of trading you can do in the markets. There are what are called swing traders and they trade on a longer time frame. So they'll buy and hold for a week, a couple weeks, maybe even a couple months. And obviously those trades aren't counted as day trades. So you could take as many swing trades as you wanted. Anyway, that's what the PDT rule is, where it came from and how you can get around it. I hope you learned something cool and I'll see you in the next video.